Welcome to the Blues Trail Revisited Podcast, special Juke Joint Festival edition. It's episode two, and I'm Ted Reed. This podcast is sponsored by the Clarksdale Tourism Commission, also known as Visit Clarksdale. This podcast is an offshoot of a film I finished this year about my return to the Mississippi Delta to rediscover the places I first encountered 50 years ago. To see the film, just go to www.bluestrailrevisited.com. It's day two of the 18th annual Juke Joint Festival in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and I'll be talking with musicians, food vendors, and many more folks. The mission is to give the world a taste of the incredibly unique experience a visit to Clarksdale is. A continuing favorite of the Juke Joint Festival is Terry Harmonica Bean from Pontotoc, Mississippi. He's a descendant of the Hill Country Bluesmen and keeps his one-man show going year-round, especially in Clarksdale. My baby, give me a high temperature. One on one with me. Kiss and dance. One on two four. One hundred and three people, four and five, but she just too warm to stay alive. She's a hot baby. Talking here with Terry Harmonica Bean from Pontotoc, Mississippi. How long have you been playing at the Juke Joint Festival? I've been playing at the Juke Joint Festival for Roger Stoli ever since he started. I was one of the first musicians. Really? Uh, 18, yeah, 18 I met years. Roger. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I met Roger about 18 years ago in uh, down in Greenville at the Mississippi Delta Blues Fest for the first time. Excellent. Excellent. And I think at that time. He had an idea, and I had one, too. Tell me some of the other places you've played in your career. Where you... Man, I've been all over Europe. I've been down all over South America, mm. uh, Australia. Wow. Oh, man, you name it, just everywhere. All over the States and all over Europe, South America, Australia. Oh, uh, man, I'm usually just not coming back in the country from down to Brazil or somewhere Right. For the juke joint, you know, uh, every year for ever since I've been, I went full yeah. time in blues mm-hmm. in 2008. Yeah, I've got a postcard you gave me um, from when you were playing in Israel in 2014. You know, yes, typical of the kind of areas that you've gone all over the place. Hey, tell me something. What makes a hill country blues different from the Delta blues? Well, the hill country blues in the in the blues feel. Uh, if you know this, this, this thing, the blues is a serious kind of music, Terry. Yeah. It's serious, and the Mississippi Delta and the Hill Country people used to battle it out all the time. Who was the dominant one in the blues? Mm-hmm. Now I went around at that time, but my grandfather Rossy Johnson, my daddy, and them, and grandma, and a lot of the older people, they knew about these people. Muddy Waters. My daddy used to work with BB King and Albert King, Lil Milton. It was tons of blues, man, all over Mississippi. But the difference is, both was good. The Mississippi Delta stuff had the laid back stuff, real low key. Yeah. And the hill country people had that rock, that rhythm thing. That music went to the church. It was called sanctified music. Right. It wasn't that but the blues, but it went to the church with a different name. Right. So when Muddy Waters was coming to the hill country, Highland Wolf was the man up there. You had Highland Wolf, Buckle White, Big Joe Williams. There were tons of blues men up that way. But when Muddy went famous in Chicago with Leonard Chester, yeah. and then Highland Wolf came along, okay. well, they had a big con, you know, got into it about, about this music. Okay. And Leonard Chester, they didn't understand what was going on. It was a black thing. You understand what I'm saying? I do, I do, yes. It was a black thing. Right. Well, see, what, 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 what Wolf didn't like, he liked the Muddy Waters, but he also knew 
that the music that was being played in Chicago at that time was not Mississippi Delta music. No. It was hill country music. But you had Delta guys playing it. And Muddy Water was the first to do that to combine the Mississippi Delta blues and the hill country blues together. Mm. And the blues exploded when they done that. Yes, that's it what, did. That's yes, what made Wolf upset. Okay. Yeah. All right, I can see that. But both was good, both of them. Right, Both. Right. Yeah. And all these musicians that Muddy Waters had and Wolf had, they all come out the circle of Mississippi. There you go. And there was tons of them, tons. It was, it was everywhere. And it's still awesome. That's true. That's yes, true. And it's you, still awesome. Yeah, yeah, and you are among them. What I won the last of in Northeast Hill Country is yeah, keeping it going. Right, well. You're There's doing- several others up there, but they don't play. Yeah. And the reason they don't play, they've been brainwashed with this devil music thing from way back that you're going to go to hell for singing the blues. Yeah, you're traveling <laughs> enough for all of them, you know, I think at this point, you know. So to tell me, Terry, what have you been doing yes, uh, to, to get over during the pandemic? I mean, this has been tough for every musician, you know, and someone who travels as much as you, I can't, can't imagine. What, what did I do like. to get over the pandemic? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, I played on I played on a, uh, online a couple of times for my friend Colleen. I done real well with it. Oh, okay. But you know what? Yeah. I took me a job, man, and went back to work. That's what I done. That's how I got over it. Wow, did you go back to the, go back to that factory or what? Did you, yeah, you I went back to the factory. Yeah. Not that one. I went to a different one. Right. But I'm still wrecking leaves for people. I'm fixing folks' cars and. Mm-hmm. I'm fixing folk flower beds, All right. and I'm doing whatever. Still, always done that. Okay, like the rest of us, you know. Yeah, <laughs> whatever we can do. So, yeah, man, whatever. When, when will you be traveling? I ain't stolen then, though. Oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Your fans are glad to hear it too. So, when uh, when will you be traveling again? Well, I done my first blues festival last Saturday in Columbus, Mississippi. Mm. Catfish in Alley, me and my band, so uh, that turned out real well. And Sunday night last week, I was here at Red's, and Red asked me back again on Thursday night. So Saturday, I'll be playing at the Duke joint uh, over behind Rogers right. at some place over there, and then I go to Club Vegas that night. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I got about three or four different places to play. Yes, well, that's good. Keep them busy during yeah. the uh, during the festival here. Well, listen. But I'm still working in the factory. I just get off to work today after working nine hours today. Oh, I. am at Red tonight. That's that's. It's where you get all the energy from, man? Yeah, where do you? <laughs> I, was, I was born with it, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's certainly hope. It's certainly holding we you up. We got all these people's here in Red tonight, man. Yeah. <laughs> you go to the <laughs> All right. It's packed house, man. It's been a packed house tonight. Good for you, man. All right. Well, I listen. I, I'm I'm proud for my friend Red keeping the juke joints alive. You know, Jimmy yeah. Duck home <laughs> and Big Charles up here. We got Mr. Ellis, the doorman. Yep. We want to thank these people for keeping this juke joint thing going on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's one of the last ones, you know. Yeah. Now all the fans who got here at this place, man, this is amazing. Well, it's amazing. Hopefully there'll be even more people next year. If you can oh, imagine yeah. it'll, that. Oh yeah, it'll it'll pick up. I wasn't gonna do no traveling this year, but uh, Spain didn't call me and Germany didn't call me, so yeah, right. I took my first shot a couple of weeks ago, so I gotta take another tomorrow. All right, good for you. And I've been I'm telling you what, I was feeling real good. I've been feeling good for sixty years. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I took that shot about two weeks ago, and hell, I got the stag in there for about three days. Mm-hmm. But I got to take another tomorrow, so. Oh, well, well, good luck with so, that. Good luck with that, and uh, hope so, you last another 60 years. I don't drink nothing, but good. I might have to start drinking. Yeah, you I never know. That, exactly. I'm going to put it on that doctor, though, that gave me that shot. Oh, yeah? He the one got me on this crack and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got it from him. They asked me about it. He the one gave it to me. Well, there you go. There Y'all you go. go get it. I go know. get it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, okay, thanks then. again. Okay. Take care. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming out to the Juke Girl tonight.
When I think of the blues, I can't help but think of the varieties of southern soul cooking you can find at the Juke Joint Festival. One of the places that's new this year is the food tent set up outside Grandma's House of Pancakes on 3rd Street in downtown Clarksdale. I talked to the head cook, Jasmine. Okay, we are talking with Jasmine outside of Grandma's House of Pancakes in Clarksdale, Mississippi during the Juke Joint Festival. And Jasmine, how are you today? Good in yourself. Thank you very much. All right. So I understand you have a tent. And uh, yes. what, what are you guys cooking up? So today we have boiled crawfish straight from Louisiana. We're doing the Louisiana thing out here, bringing it to Clarksdale. We have pig feet tripe, boiled pig feet tripe, turkey necks, corn, potatoes, everything. Sausage. That's great. Excellent. All right. So Boudin, too. All kind of Louisiana food. Wow. Are you guys from Louisiana? or? Yes, we are. Okay. My dad's actually from Clarksdale, but we are from Louisiana. Exactly. So um, where, where have you been um, showing up these days? Because, you know, the, the, the music festival scene has been kind of, kind of quiet, you know, because of the okay. pandemic. But um, have you guys been able to, you know, show up places? Well, mostly we just usually cook at our home through our grandmas. We right. do ball crawfish, sell plates, things right. like that. But this is actually our first festival so, ever. Right. Well, so this is a monumental moment for us. Exactly. What do you think so far? I'm loving it. Everybody here is very nice. Everyone's coming up trying to see what Louisiana is talking about, and they're loving it. Right. What's, their, what's, the, what's the hottest seller now? What's, what's the, everybody's favorite so far? Today, it has been the crawfish okay. and crawfish boudin. So they love crawfish, period. Mm. Got to tell you, the first time I had pig's feet, though, I was absolutely blown away. I thought it was the <laughs> most amazing thing, you know, in the world. It was, Everyone's it was, always so turned away by the name, but it's always oh, so no, good. Oh, no, no. You got to try it. You really do. It. <laughs> what you got to get past the surface. What, what are your favorite foods there? Mine is crawfish. Crawfish, crawfish period. Not yep. Just crawfish. Okay. That's what I'm here for, the crawfish. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like you've got a good supply of it, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you got some more festivals lined up? I mean, uh, what, what's, what's next for you I guys? know we want to do the Blues Festival out here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but I, I think that's all for right now. We right. don't really know yet. Mm -hmm. Trying to see how COVID goes. Yeah, See right. if Louisiana, everything opens back up. Right. Do you do but for sure, Blues Festival. Yeah. Do you do private parties? Do you like, like, do like catering and stuff? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. So, so if someone's interested, if someone down there is interested in getting in touch with you, how do they do that? Um, you can call us at 337-552-3797. Okay. Excellent. Well, hopefully your phone will start ringing off the hook after people try what you're, <laughs> yes. what you're handing hopefully out Yes. Hopefully with this there. podcast. Yes. Hopefully. hopefully we get some marketing. Thank you all so much for asking us to be a part of y'all Oh, listen, podcast. I love it. You know, every, every year there's something new down there. And uh, this, mm -hmm. th this is just like, you know, this, this is definitely keeping up that tradition. So hopefully you'll be coming back next year. Yes, we'd love to. Okay, excellent. Jasmine, thank you so much. Very welcome. Thank you. Have a great have weekend. A good one. Okay, you too. Thank you. You as well. Bye bye. Here's a story I want you to know about the very first day I met me too. We drove on down to this automobile. There it was sitting up behind a wheel. Well, I knew it was him. You asked me. Another longtime Juke Joint Festival performer is Libby Ray Watson. Her music bridges old time Americana and the blues and adds a perpetually spunky flavor to the proceedings. I'm talking with Libby Ray Watson and the Juke Joint Festival in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Libby Ray, how are you today? Hey, I'm, I'm stimulus overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> That's your joint festival, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Who, 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 have you been who have you been listening to? Well, I just walked away from it here in Cadillac. John Nolan, who is 94, is, is his 94th birthday, and he and Bill Abel, who accompanies John a lot, were playing in front of Cathead, which was great. That's so that was that was a lot of fun. I, uh, last night I got into town just in time to go over and. Uh, 
your Kingfish play, Christone Ingram. Yes, at yes. the uh, Delta Blues Festival. And I'm here to tell you that kid has really developed into a very fine blues player. He now, uh, you know, the notes have more meaning. They're not how many notes you can no. get in the measure. He no. has learned to really put his feeling into it, and it shows. He's a big stage act now. Oh, know? he he definitely is. No, he was an old yeah. soul when he started. But yeah. uh, now, yeah. now it's just like amazing what he's doing, you know. Yeah, and and he's so sweet and kind. Yes, know? he it's is. Oh, he's, yeah, know? and yeah, really, just you know, the most accessi- so, accessible person, you know. Yeah. So really, those are the the main two people I've seen because I I was so tired I didn't go out last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll make up for it tonight, I'm sure. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to pace myself. <laughs> so, how many of these juke joint festivals have you been to now? Oh, Do you know? uh, um, probably about 12 or 13, maybe. Wow. Yes. Something like that. Okay. All right. I think I started playing here at Adam in 2012. Right. But I had been coming before that, you know, t- up here. So, um, yeah, right. That was my first one. Well, you know, from what I've seen, people seem to flock to your shows, you know, um, what what do they say when they when they come up and talk to you? When they I imagine they do come up and talk to you. Uh, what do they say that keeps them coming back? What is it that they say they really like? Well, I'm not exactly sure. I'm mystified by it myself. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy that they do keep coming back. Oh, but, there you, you know, go. I play more of a traditional style. I'm not a, a big band, uh, five piece band kind of person. Right. And I play more of the old the old style blues and and. Uh, you know, there's there's still people who who love that that as well. Right. Um, so, you know, I think I get a lot of that kind of crowd that their musical taste is more in an in an acoustic realm or more um, like when I play with my friends Bill Steeper and 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 that crowd. Right. And, and we do the stoop down rounders. We're doing old jug band stuff and that kind of thing that they're just novelty a lot of them are novelty kind of songs right. but people love them because they're so quirky and strange and we're having so much fun playing all these different kinds of instruments you know right so, and, uh, yeah you're, and so that's going to be tomorrow night at nine right yes okay yes at levon's at, at, yeah We've go- got a dog here that's barking. Now. That's okay. That's <laughs> authentic, man. <laughs> you know, that's what we want to hear. So, so have you, what have you been doing during the pandemic here besides being understimulated? Have you been uh, working well, any new songs, uh, new material? I have. I've worked up to a few new songs and uh, also did a lot of my little folk art stuff that I sell out at the Shack Up Inn. So right. I had a lot of that going. And... Um, and you know, just I just to get out of the house, I do a lot of nature stuff. You know, I just get out and walk, and I like to take pictures and stuff like that. You know, so oh yeah, uh, that, I love I your photos. Five, those are great. I had, yeah, I had like five gigs last year. That's how many I had. Oh, you're two kidding. of them were before the pandemic, right. and then the other three were uh, cautiously during, <laughs> <laughs> clandestinely done. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. They were, a little scary, but uh, it yes. worked out. I'm still alive. So, Definitely. Uh, so are things picking up? Are things picking up, do you think, or, or what? Yeah, I think they are, but still cautiously for, for me because I just feel like it's you know it's, it's not over. And no. a lot of these folks think it is just completely over. Mm. But um, so I'm just still, you know, I've had my shots, but I still walk around town here with my mask right. because I want people to know that, you know, that I'm trying yep. <laughs> to be smart yep, and yep. so uh boy i just saw this dog and he's a good big old pit bull good thing he's nice that's um, right some of them are you know <laughs> <laughs> most of, the ones most that are, are really are. sweet you know yeah most of them are really uh, but anyway so yeah. yeah i had five gigs last year and i've had one so far this year mm-hmm. and it was a uh, in tupelo um and it was like a songwriter in the round kind of thing so it was a good little warm-up to get back out great into the realm of things you know yeah. so how often do you play with the stoop down rounders how long how often do you guys get together or is it just this oh, usually once or twice a year and right. it's a mixed uh, a mixed bunch each time um we never know who's gonna make it we're we'll be missing three of them this year because uh two of them can't get here travel and all that and, right. and one of them is just he's kind of gone into another business now so 
Uh, oh. Yeah, you know, we're just so just tonight. I mean, tomorrow night when we play, it's going to be uh, me and part of the uh, Jake Leg Stompers. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, whatever you can get together, right? <laughs> yeah. Bill says the best way to get a band name is to look at exit signs on the interstate. That's right. <laughs> Especially in Mississippi, you know. <laughs> Some great names. I'm telling you. Yeah. Hot coffee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for people who are uh, you know, missing the, the Juke Joint Festival this year but want to come next year, what would you tell them? I would tell them to start as soon as they can, making their plans to find a place to stay. Right. Uh, that's the main thing they're going to run into if they decide last minute to come unless they've got a motor home or, or like tent camping or have friends here. They need to uh, get that first. And then, uh, you know, just cathead.biz. Roger Stoley does a great job at keeping that website up to date. Absolutely. Um, and people forget to go to websites, you know, uh, but they they do have a lot of valuable information when it comes to Juke Joint Fest, and it gives the schedules and the rundown and where right. where everything is, you know? Exactly. That's so, good. So between him and uh, Visit Clarksdale, you, know, you can pretty much find out anything you need to know. Yeah, and you know, and then the live from Clarksdale stuff will be having a lot of these uh, this weekend. They, they're going to have a lot of the broadcasts to broadcast. So you'll be able to watch it live wherever you are in the world. Exactly. Out of necessity, these uh, alternative channels have, have popped up, and actually, you know, some of them are working for people. So that's, that's Well, you know, the thing, you think about it, I mean, there's nothing better than being in front of live music, of course, but uh, some people just physically can't get there for various reasons, you know, whether it's just distance, money, or handicapped in some way. Right. where they can't do festivals, they get the opportunity to see it. And I think that, I hope that's something that the pandemic uh, developed that will keep going. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I do. It I is. think it's it's important for for uh, for all those other people who can't get here to be able to view it and see it and know what's going on, you know, at least feel like they're a part of it somehow. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen. Have have a, have some great shows, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, I'll catch you next time I'm down there. And well, that'd be great. I'm gonna miss you this time. I was looking forward to seeing you. I brought my hat. I was headed ready. There you Pop go. My head when I see you. Uh, well, keep wearing that hat. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ted. I, I appreciate it. Libby Ray, thank you. Libby Ray Watson. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you. All, All right. Bye bye. bye. Oh, baby, please don't go, go, go. Oh, yes, you know we should be. Well, Lord, are your red dress, Mama? Let's go stepping out the night. Celebrating his 94th birthday this festival is Cadillac John. He caught up with him outside of the Cathead store on Delta Avenue. I'm talking with Cadillac John at uh, the Juke Joint Festival in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Cadillac John, how long have you been playing guitar? Oh, I, I should have come up with it, but I've been playing a long time now. Yeah. So I've been all over Italy, Europe, and all them places. Excellent, excellent. Who are some of the yeah, folks? Who are some of the folks you've performed with? I, I can't keep it just right, but you know, I played around with different people around, you know. But I just didn't get the name and stuff. <laughs> if I've been somewhere else, well, where did you start playing? Started playing. Yeah, where did you start playing? Where Where did you pick up the guitar first? Oh, I was started playing. I think I was in Cleveland. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I know I was. How old were you? 
started how, playing with you. How old were you uh, when you first started playing? Oh, uh, no, about about twenty something. Oh, really? All right. Twenty, twenty-one, like that. I went messing with. Yeah. Did you uh, travel a lot when you were younger? Oh yeah, I've been all across the water. That you know, uh, with a. Oh, uh, Mud Morgan Field now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Muddy Water's son. He, yeah, yeah. Mud, they call him Mud. Right. I've been over with them around a good bit. Are you just going to, you know, just sort of keep on doing this until you can't do it anymore? Because it's, it's pretty amazing for you to be doing it, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, at, at your ripe I old age. Yeah, I've done it. Yeah? I do. But if people tell me I'm wrong, though. <laughs> Different <laughs> my color. Tell me I'm way out the way. Though. I'm not supposed to go there. I'm supposed to be a Christian, you know. Yeah. But right. I do what I can, you know. I ain't no bad person. No. But I just like to play, play music. Yeah. So what? What is your secret to long life? I mean, you've lived 94 years. What? What? What keeps you going? <laughs> I don't know that. Man. I don't know. I don't know. That's just that's God's way. No, oh, really. You know, let me live that long. Okay. So is it? Is it? Is it, yeah. is it, is it like? I football? thought it was ninety five. No, no, okay. But he said ninety four. Okay. okay. Well, take take the year. You know, what the heck? Hey. So, um, do you do you attribute it to clean living? Do you drink, smoke, do any of that stuff? You know, the things you. Well, yeah, not much. My little. I take a swallow sometimes now and then. Okay. I don't right. do. Right. I don't. No, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just curious. You know what keeps you going? Because you know when you, when you, uh -huh. when you, when you can talk to somebody who's, who's, who's definitely, you know, lived a life and have and put on some good years, you want to find yeah. out. You want to find out what their secret is. You know. <laughs> yeah, I ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. I am the. I enjoy. What What yeah. do you like the most about it? Well. I raised them. I just like to be in it, you know, with it, you know. All right. Oh, uh, well, you know, I ain't got a good line to talk all this good talk, but you know, but but I just like to eat blue. Who were some of your favorite uh, musicians when you were coming up? Oh, uh, I like one Muddy Water. Yeah. Bobby Bland and mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't thank all of them. That's great. Yeah, That's BB great. King. And all. Excellent. I used to be around with BB a lot when he's coming up. You're still around, and that's that's an amazing thing, you know. Yeah. So we're looking forward to listening to you play, and um, we will uh, hopefully catch you next year at the festival. Okay. I also. Oh, thank right. you. Thank you very much, John. Okay. And that's it for this time. I'd like to thank everyone for listening to the Blues Trail Revisited podcast in partnership with Visit Clarksdale. You can watch the film that inspired this podcast by going to www.bluestrailrevisited.com. And you can find out a lot more about Clarksdale, Mississippi by going to visitclarksdale.com or download the app and check out all the cool interactive features. Next time on the Blues Trail Revisited podcast, we will be diving into the biggest day of the Juke Joint Festival. It's Saturday, and the number of musical acts is almost overwhelming. Sounds like fun. I'm Ted Reed. Make sure to join me for a truly packed podcast, and keep on bluesing.